up, friends. And, and coming off quite a busy weekend, you were down in DC for the Women's March. I was there. A superhero in, in real life as well. <laughs> uh, what was that experience like? How was it? It was exciting I mean, here in New York. Yeah, was anyone else here at the March? Here in New York? It was pretty incredible. That was an, an, an incredible feeling. I don't think I'll ever forget it. Mm -hmm. um, the, my favorite point was when we reached the White House and everywhere you turned, whichever street you were looking down, it was just a sea of people. A sea of people and the best energy, the most positive place you could be. Everyone was supportive, everyone was loving each other. It was Great. pretty amazing. Yeah. You had a pretty amazing sign as well. You kind of had a little Supergirl reference. I wish we had a picture of it, but can you tell everybody what it said? <laughs> it said, hey, Donald, uh, don't try to touch my pussy. It's made of steel. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Well, uh, let's talk about um, being made of steel in a way and, and being Supergirl for the past few years. Um, what's it been like for you and, and what has it meant for you to kind of be this, um, you know, symbol for young girls everywhere too? Uh, well, she's just as much a symbol for me, I think. Um, she kind of, the, the role, <laughs> you know, her and Superman are truth, justice in the American way and she's, she set some really high standards to live up to and she, playing the role I think has definitely infused itself into my life and helped me to be a stronger, braver person than I ever have been. It's been one of the most difficult things I've ever done. Uh, <laughs> definitely the most difficult job. Uh, really rewarding in that way, though. And I get to work with some really amazing people. And uh, I love it. Yeah. I, love, I love Supergirl. <laughs> you do. We love Supergirl. Uh, what was it like when you first got that call that you were going to play this role? Um, Cool uh, well, I sort of didn't believe it because I had auditioned so many times for months, literally, for almost three months. And uh, so when I finally got the news, I, it was just this like wash of relief. Mm -hmm. Like, oh my gosh, I don't have to audition anymore. <laughs> um, but also, I, you know, that's an overwhelming feeling. I knew kind of how big of an undertaking it was going to be and that my life was going to be a lot busier just for the sheer amount of hours I was going to have to work. And what has it been like, you know, you guys were initially on CBS and you're now on the CW. Have you found that there's, uh, you know, have you reached more fans and have you found that your fan base now is really into the show and, and that whole CW lineup with The Flash and Arrow? and I think we've, like, it feels like we've gone home to our family. Um... It feels so right to be with all of the other shows. Doing that four-part crossover was just so as cool. insane for us <laughs> as it was, I think, for the yeah. fans of the shows. Um, it's kind of an indescribable feeling to be in a room where almost everyone is wearing a superhero <laughs> suit. <laughs> you have to step back and kind of look around and be like, whoa, this is pretty cool that we're bringing these pages to life that people have loved for so long. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I think, I think we've reached um, some new fans and I think that it's really helped the show being on the CW. It's kind of allowed us to expand our universe and mm -hmm. take chances that we didn't really get to take on CBS. And what, what's it been like to do those crossovers? It must be so cool. Is there anyone or a, a, a particular person that you were really excited to work with when you did well, this? Well, I always love working with Grant. Mm -hmm. He's just as fun as you would think he is to work with and he's hilarious and... Um, such a great guy. But I was really excited to work with Katie Lotz. Um, she's such a badass. She does most of her stunts. She's incredible. Everyone, and Brandon Routh, I mean, we all had so much to talk about, and it's uh, uh, good vibes. Yeah, what do, what do superheroes talk about on set? <laughs> <laughs> well, I did have a lot of information to share to Brandon, and I got to kind of trade stories. I mean, his... Uh, he's, it sounded like he had a really difficult process too. I mean, it's not easy flying, mm -hmm. and we, you know, talked about techniques. You kind of get to do that. I, I can do that with Helen Slater and with Dean Kane and mm -hmm. Brandon, and everyone has their own techniques, but it always hurts. <laughs> <laughs> what would you? What kind of superhero or superpower would you want? Would you want flight or invincibility? 
Oh, flight. Flight? Yeah. What is it like on set? Do you actually, do they hook you up to one of those flying uh, cord machines? What are those called? Anybody flying know? cord machine. Flying cord machines? <laughs> <laughs> I'm in uh, the wires and I'm in harness. Yes. Yeah. What does that feel like? Not comfortable, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's what you would expect it to feel like. It sort of feels like a uncomfortable tight metal diaper <laughs> um but that being said you're i mean you're up in the air and they're blowing this wind on you and it is uh it does kind of let your imagination run wild and it is uh, pretty exhilarating so cool and what's it like to wear that suit um on set all the time is it comfortable oh yeah <laughs> now it's like a second skin now sometimes i forget that i'm wearing it and now we're, we're shooting in some locations in downtown vancouver and i will find myself walking around getting into a building that we're shooting in, forgetting I'm in a suit, <laughs> and getting into an elevator with people that are like... <laughs> and it's funny, because they don't always say anything, but I love it. It's, I think I'm, I'm pretty lucky in terms of superhero garb. Yeah. Was it cool the first time that you put that suit on and you were just like, wow, this is... Yeah, I don't think it hit me yet. I don't think it hit me yet until the first day of filming mm -hmm. in the suit. Um, yeah, I don't think it did. Sometimes it still doesn't. Yeah. I, I mean, I get a, a beautiful cape. I love that cape. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Come on. Guys, I just want to wear the suit. This is why I'm asking her all about this, right? <laughs> we all want to wear the suit. <laughs> What was it like to, you know, everyone knows uh, Melissa from Glee, of course, which is uh, awesome. Um, and I hear you're going to be taking your singing chops to Supergirl because you guys are doing a musical crossover with The Flash. Is that the news these that's days? That's cool. Yes, that's happening. What's that moment. all about? <laughs> I think it's, I think it's going to be really fun. And I got to read the script. I think it's really clever. Um, it's... Uh, <laughs> I think those two characters, Flash and Supergirl, kind of lend themselves to that. They're so joyful and and um, positive. So I'm excited. I'm excited for it. Can you give us any hints of what we can expect from this? Well, I know, haven't they released the information that it's Music Meister, yeah. which is really cool. Mm -hmm. um, I do not know who's playing him, but I know there are possibilities, and I think mm -hmm. there are people that you guys would all be really excited about. Um, I don't know what else. There isn't an original song, one original song. Do we know who sings that original song? I do know who sings the songs. She won't tell us. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have to watch, which I think it airs in March, is that correct? I'm not sure, but yeah, yeah. probably. Sometime this year, we gotta watch this musical because musicals are all the rage right now, as we saw with La La Land being the top of the box office, and you actually Worked with Damien Chazelle on Whiplash. I did. That's pretty cool. Yeah. How does it feel to see this movie kind of exploding? I'm not surprised. Yeah. I think Damien is a genius, mm -hmm. and I can't wait to see what else he does. So cool. Um, well, you know, you're also in a movie um, for Patriot's Day, which we're going to talk about a little bit later. But I do want to ask some questions that the fans are very curious about, mm -hmm. which is, of course, Kara and Monel's romantic relationship, perhaps, on Supergirl. And, mm -hmm. and what have you... Or what do you think could possibly happen? Or what do you know happens in the future with them? I know what happens. <laughs> um, but... She's not going to tell me. <laughs> uh, it's just a, a girl from Krypton and a boy from Daxum <laughs> figuring it out. <laughs> Have you had fun, though, playing uh, you know, with this relationship on oh, set? Oh, of course. Oh, my God. It's the most fun. He is uh, my favorite person to act with on the show. He's fantastic, so talented and funny. So funny. Um, and I think he brings a lot of life to that character. So I'm sensing a real romance, guys. What about you? <laughs> I'm looking at Melissa's face like, come on, give me all the hints. <laughs> we, we also have another romance between Alex and Maggie. Yes. Um, and let's get a claps for that because yeah. I'm so proud of Alex. <laughs> Um, what can we expect from them? And I know the first uh, episode of this year is premiering tonight, so mm -hmm. I'm sure we'll find out a little bit more. But what mm -hmm. can you tell us about Alex and Maggie? Um, I think uh, it's really fun that you'll get to see their relationship bloom a little more and Alex really come into her own. 
Um, I'm really proud of them too. I'm proud of Alex. And Kyler and Florian are killing it. They're amazing. Mm -hmm. And what else can we expect from the rest of the episodes this year? Um, is there one episode in particular that really blew you away and you're excited for the fans to see? I, I, tonight's episode is so fun. Mm -hmm. And that one was amazing to film. Kevin Smith is awesome. How cool is that, Kevin <laughs> Smith? That's amazing. <laughs> I had the best time with him. Um, but uh, there's some really exciting things happening uh, towards the end of the season. We don't have all the scripts yet, so I don't really know everything. But uh, new villains that are ominous and scary, and Cadmus continues their reign of terror, and we'll see how that wraps up. So far, who has been the scariest villain for you um, on Supergirl? And what's this it like seeing them ever? Like I think this season. And what's it like seeing them in, like, in the flesh on set? Well, I That'd thought Parasite cool. was pretty damn scary, yeah. but I never saw him in the flesh. Mm -hmm. I was acting to tennis balls. <laughs> but uh, seeing him built um, from the computer was, he's, he was pretty scary. Yeah. He was pretty gross. <laughs> and is it, do you ever get overwhelming, you know, as we see here with all this, this fan base that we have? with these superhero shows and movies. Is it overwhelming to make sure that you're playing the character as everyone wants to see her on, on screen? No, that's such a joy. Mm -hmm. I don't get overwhelmed by that because she is so fun to play. Mm -hmm. And I think what I have found inside of her is that joy and she's positivity and sunshine and, and strength. Mm -hmm. um, so no, I don't get overwhelmed by it. I love it. It must be hard, though, from, for now you're playing Supergirl, but when you look you know, t towards these movie roles and other roles in your future, is it going to be hard for you to play anything else but Supergirl? No, that's <laughs> the fun of it, is finding, uh, you know, finding new ways to express yourself in different arenas and different characters and putting yourself in different shoes. That's my favorite part of the job. Yeah. So let's, uh, I want to talk about Patriot's Day, which has everyone here seen Patriot's Day, or most, some of you? Another amazing film. Um, what was that like for you to get the call to be a part of this movie? You know, an, about an event that's still very um, relevant and everybody's it's still in their mind. And it was a lot of people said maybe it was too soon or maybe it wasn't. Um, what was your take on it when you got approached to be in the film? Well, initially I had auditioned to play Jessica Kensky. Mm -hmm. um, so when I got the call, they said, oh, well, there's another role. It's um, different. Mm -hmm and we wonder if you'd be interested. And um, I read the scenes and found out it was the widow of Tamerlan. And I was, I was absolutely drawn to it because of how important this story feels right now. Um, you know, I think it's a worthy tradition to tell the untold true story of events like this. And I'm honored to be a part of it. And what do you hope when people see the film that they take away from your character in particular? And what did you hope to kind of portray? Well, she's tough. Um, she's really en enigmatic. There's not much we know about her. Um, a lot of the other actors in the movie had their real life counterparts there. Were, they were very much involved. Um, the atmosphere on set was, it was very much, we, we, they, you could tell how thorough they had been mm -hmm. in preparing um, and how important it was to them to be as honest in its delivery. Um, but so with her, I, I don't know. I, that was something that Peter Berg said on set. He said, he, I don't ever want to know what she's thinking because mm -hmm. we don't. Yeah. So what was your process like when you were researching um, for the role? And like you said, your other counterpart or everyone else had their counterparts there. So what kind of research did you do to kind of get in that mindset to play? Catherine Russell. Well, again, there's not much information about her. So all I could do is look up really what happened to her the day of the events. And, um, you know, there's some information about her uh, from her high school yearbook, but there's not uh, much to piece together about her. So it was a, it was a difficult process. I'm yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. But what was it like being on that set of this film that's, you know, telling the story that so many people, it touched so many people's lives and it's a true American story. Right. Um, what was it like for you to be on that set and what was the vibe like on set? Um, there, there almost felt like there was this reverence about how much everyone cared mm -hmm. 
to uh, that that was there. A lot of oh, I was astounded the day we shot the questioning scene. Um, most of the background act actors and extras were veterans, so and had been at the finish line, and um, there was just a lot of sharing of stories, and it was uh, inspiring. I think it was really inspiring. Mm -hmm. What was it like to work with some of those actors? I know you've worked with J.K. Simmons before, mm -hmm. um, but you have Mark Wahlberg as well. Mm -hmm. um, what was it like to work with them, and what did you learn or take away from them at all? Well, I didn't actually get to do any scenes with Mark, Mark. but he was there every day producing, and I mean, that's obviously his hometown, so he <laughs> had a lot invested mm -hmm. in that story, and his heart and soul was poured into that. You could tell. Well, it's an incredible film, so congratulations on that. Thank you. And, I, and you've had such a great career over the past few years. <laughs> it's, it's pretty amazing. How do you go um, you know, about picking roles or auditioning for certain roles? And, and what's your goal? Is, is it to play different sorts of characters? Yeah, I mean, uh, the whole spectrum is what interests me. Mm -hmm. um, I, there's nothing that I'm not... It, it also is instinct. Instinctual. Mm -hmm. I it, I really do just gravitate towards the things that my gut is like. Yeah, this is something I think you want. Mm -hmm. um, and in terms of auditioning, I just try to as much as I can yeah. and read as much as I can. Read as many scripts and you know, everyone's inspired by different things. And there are some scripts that I might read that another person that I m don't really connect with and another person might. But I, you know, the right jobs find you and. Um, you kind of just have to try to go with the flow. Yeah. And how do you sort of balance film with TV? Because I'm sure you have a, a nice grueling schedule for Supergirl. <laughs> um, so how do you go about balancing that part of your career? Um, well, I mean, there are different muscles to flex. but And also timing is hard, obviously, because I, I shoot Supergirl for nine months out of the year. Yeah. And then I only have a specific amount of time between to try to do something else if I can, if I'm lucky enough to. Yeah. And uh, this past summer, I was lucky enough to be a part of Patriot's Day and then another indie film called Sundogs that I'm really proud of. Yeah. Um, so you kind of just have to throw your hands in the air and say, what's going to come will come. And I, I honestly also, nine months of work on this show is so grueling that if I didn't have a job in the hiatus, I'd be so, <laughs> I'd be fine with it. <laughs> I know, uh, you, you said flexing some muscles and probably literally too. Uh, what's your workout schedule like for to play Supergirl? I, I, kind of the job is its own workout. Yeah. Um, flying is a workout and the fight scenes are really grueling sometimes and um, we also we just <laughs> logistically have a really big stage so you probably walk a bunch of miles I don't know I should wear a pedometer sometime and see <laughs> how much I walk in a day walking from set to set or just from the DEO back to my trailer or something well the flying cord machines you know I know them very well <laughs> and I'm sure those are super painful <laughs> yeah those um, are tough what is the toughest part about playing Supergirl Oh, gosh, I don't know. Um, uh, yeah, I guess just the sheer amount of work it is. I mean, you watch a, a fight sequence, and on camera it's four or five minutes, but that takes us a day and a half, sometimes two or three, to shoot. And it's um, that can sometimes be tedious, but, I mean, it's always worth it because the end result will watch and be like, gosh, I never could have imagined it looking like that. Mm -hmm. And so if there's one superhero or villain that Supergirl could actually come into contact with in the future, who would it be and why for you? Does it have to be from the DC universe? No. <laughs> what if it was Velociraptor? Oh. From, from Isla Nubar. <laughs> Guys, that would be freaking awesome, would it not? That's amazing. I know they were kind of nice in the third, in the last one in Jurassic World, but... But that's all because of Chris Pratt, you know? Yeah. He had them down. <laughs> you never know. I, I don't know if I want to be in a room with a raptor. But that's brave, Supergirl. That's really brave. <laughs> but of course, I do want to get to the audience Q&A, because I'm sure you guys have tons of questions. So who's first? Hi, Melissa. Thank Hi. you for coming. Uh, big fan. 
Uh, I just had a question about the musical episode. Mm -hmm. uh, since both casts, Flash and Supergirl, both have like a lot of musical experience, did you guys ask to have a musical episode, or how did it come about? I'm pretty sure Greg Berlanti is responsible. I think he's wanted to do this. I get the feeling he's <laughs> wanted to do it for a while, because he's a musical theater man himself. Uh, but there, there are a lot of musical theater people, or people in, in across all the shows. So I don't think anyone was, um, did, they didn't want to do it. <laughs> I think all of us are like, OK, yeah. <laughs> Will there be tap dancing in this musical? Uh, Guys, when do you want to see some superheroes tapping? Like, <laughs> I, I just, that's my dream. That's my dream. She's not spilling spoilers. Nope. Okay. <laughs> uh, um, two questions. My sister Carly is a huge super fan, and I was wondering if you could give her a shout out. Hello. Carly's her name? Yeah. Hey, Carly. <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> um, she might be watching this during high school right now, so I hope she doesn't get in trouble. Don't get in trouble. Teacher, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> this is educational. Um, and we wanted to know uh, more about uh, working with Kyler Lee. Oh, goodness, Kyler. <laughs> um, I think that the relationship you see on screen is very true to the way we feel about each other. It is very sisterly. Um, and kind of where the heart of the show lies, uh, in my opinion. Um, you know, women supporting each other and the difficulties in female relationships. Uh, but I adore Kyler, and she is a sister to me from another mister. <laughs> <laughs> She's the best. She's the best. Hi, Melissa. Hey, cool shirt. Thank you. I wore it just because you're here. <laughs> First, let me congratulate you on Supergirl being renewed for season three. Thank you. Yeah. Secondly, let me give kudos to the producers who believed in you and the show strongly enough that when CW passed on renewing for season two, they found you a home on a better network. So congrats <laughs> to them as well. I have two questions. First, how does it feel to have an action figure? Oh my gosh. <laughs> that is the weirdest feeling. <laughs> I, it's pretty safe to say that's something I never ever thought I would ever experience in my life. And then my second question is, since playing Supergirl, how has she changed your life and how you view the world? Well, I mean, like I was saying before, it, it's definitely infused itself into my life. And there are things that maybe I might not have been brave enough to deal with before I played her that um, this role kind of helped me confront, um, which is a really good feeling. It's definitely empowering. And that's, um, you know, that's uh, not something I've always felt. Um, so it's really infused itself in my life in, in many different ways, in ways I didn't expect either. And I've also just uh, realized things that I, I'm capable of that I, I never thought I would be just in terms of how hard I like to work and um, what I stand for. Awesome. And one more right here. Hi, Melissa. Hi. Um, so really quick, I just wanted to thank you for your portrayal, not only of Supergirl, but like you're talking about the relationship with Kyler and with Alex's character, um, because my sister's 11, and we've been able to bond so much over watching the show and, and, and getting to see that on screen. So. That's awesome. Um, but my question is, are we going to see, or can you tease maybe possibly the return of Linda Carter as the president and what her storyline might be? Because the end of the episode left us on this. That was a pretty big slight, cliffhanger. Yeah, cliffhanger <laughs> To there. do with Linda Carter. Right. I mean, right. well, as far as I know, and I hope I don't get in trouble for saying this, she was signed on for more. So, and I know she wa wanted to. Um, she's awesome, by the way. <laughs> uh, she is so wonderful. So I hope that happens, because I think it's a really interesting storyline, and it's pretty cool that it's a woman president. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. Any other guest stars coming back and making another appearance this season? Uh, I'm not sure about reappearances, but there are some new characters about to arrive that are pretty ominous and really cool, played by some cool people. Ooh, cool. Well, guys, tonight, right, is the first episode of the, the new year, so make sure to check it out. Thank you all for being here, and thank you so Thanks, much, Melissa, guys. for being here.
This is a great Thank time. you. Thanks for having me.